इन विवेक चूड़ामणि शंकराचार्य टॉक्स अबाउट कंट्रोलिंग अवर सेंसेस एज द प्रिलिमिनरी क्वालिफिकेशन फॉर अटेनिंग द नॉलेज ऑफ ब्रह्मन ही सेस विरज्य विषय व्राता दोष दृष्टिया मुहुर्मुहु स्वलक्ष्य नियतावस्था मनस शम उच्य विरज्य नॉट हैविंग रागा और अटैचमेंट और हैविंग डिटैचमेंट विषय व्राता फ्रॉम द व्रात फ्रॉम द मैनिफोल्ड सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स विषय एंड मुहुर मुहु दोष दृष्टिया continuously observing or understanding the dosha or the defects of the sense objects in bhagavad gita chapter 2 shloka 62 and 63 in four lines shri krishna very beautifully puts the psychology of human mind he says dhyayato vishayan pumsa people they start meditating on sense objects and after that it leads to total destruction of a person so one has to keep away or detach oneself from the various sense objects and that one has to do continuously it is not one time affair you have to do it continuously in kathopanishad we get this beautiful word vipashchit a person who is constantly aware of one surroundings of the lures and the attractions of sense objects and then after having detached your mind from different sense objects you have to niyata avastha you have to niyata you have to concentrate it on swa lakshye manasah mind after it is detached from all these sense objects you have to concentrate it on one's goal and what is one's goal one's goal is attaining brahman the knowledge of brahman or attaining the knowledge of the ultimate reality so we have to concentrate it on that and this is called shama so now shankaracharya is enumerating shama adi shatka sampatti the six kinds of wealth what are these wealths six kinds of wealth which starts with the quality of shama and now he has told what is shama so shama is withdrawing your mind from all sense objects withdrawing your mind from attachment to sense objects and earlier we saw viveka and vairagya so viveka and vairagya were the first two qualities in the group of qualities called sadhana chatushtaya and the third quality is shamadi shatka sampatti where the first quality is shama then shankaracharya says visheyebhya paravartya sthapanam swasva golake ubhaye sham indriyanam sa damah parikirtitah bahye analambanam vrittehe esha uparati uttama so visheyebhya paravartya one has to first turn one's sense organs from vishayebhya from the sense objects and sthapanam swasva golake every sense organ has got certain centers in our body or centers inside our brain also in our brain in the human brain there are different portions assigned to i there is this optic center then there is a portion assigned to taste there is a portion assigned to language the portion assigned to tactile perception that is the perception or the feeling of touch so in the brain there are different nerve centers assigned to different sense objects and also our sense objects are there in different places in our body shankaracharya says what should these sense objects do they have to be paravartya removed away from the sense what these sense organs should do they have to be removed away from the sense objects when we use camera so 
nowadays people all use camera in the mobile phone but if you use a separate camera it comes with a cover lens cover so once you are done with using your camera what do you do you put the cover back and put it in the bag so similarly unless you need a sense object so you are taking food your food is over you have taken your food your hunger has been appeased you are you have satisfied your hunger and then what do you do you just come away from the place where food is kept so we don't need that extra food like that you read something whatever you needed that knowledge you have acquired and then you don't need those extra books so most of the times we are using our sense organs to attain sense knowledge which is unnecessary which is not necessary we don't need those sense uh, knowledge so that is what he says that once you have attained something which you want then afterwards swaswa golake sthapanam just like you take the camera and cover the lid and put it in the bag and keep it some place safe similarly you take back your sense organs and put it in that place wherever it belongs but we don't do that our sense organs they keep on wandering all over the world it goes here it goes there our eyes we don't see what we need to see but apart from that everything we see we don't hear what we need to hear apart from that we hear everything so you are sitting in this place and you may be hearing more that chirping of the bird than what i am telling you because that is how your sense organs are trained they lack training so shankaracharya says what is damah damah is you have to take back after the work of your sense organs is over whatever need was there when that is fulfilled you have to <coughs> take back the sense organs just like a tortoise pulls back one's limbs so kurma angani eva in bhagavad gita we get this statement <coughs> similarly you have to take it back and then just if you have those small compact cameras it is so beautiful to see when you put the uh, button on button immediately the lens comes out and when you put off the uh, camera you say switch off immediately it goes and the cover is closed so if our sense of organs also work like that when i want to see something my camera will come out and otherwise it will go inside that is called damah damah ubhayesham indriyanam sa damah parikirtite parikirtitah so this is what called damah ubhayesham indriyanam so you both from the uh, sense organs and also from the perspective of mind mind so when the sense organs are withdrawn mind is also withdrawn it is not that only the sense organ is withdrawn wherever your sense organ is your mind is also there so a person can sit in a place and yet not hear anything what is being told because mind is wandering somewhere else mind is not there we say mind should also be present by doing this by controlling your sense organs you are also controlling your mind and then shankaracharya tells about the third quality in this class of shamadi shatka sampatti the six fold wealth starting with shama that is bahya analambanam vrittehe esha uparati uttama bahya means external objects so external objects are not affecting the mind analambanam vrittehe so analambanam the mind is not affected by vrittehe the mind function or the thoughts or impressions in mind vritti is not affected by bahya objects or external objects that is called uparati uttama it is called uparati it is called uparati uparati means what not getting affected by external objects not getting affected by external objects so maybe you are not wanting to see something but suddenly there is a wonderful smell coming of some wonderful thing cooking it all happens all the time here it doesn't happen in cities and other places it happens so you have this wonderful some pulao smell is coming and then you get the smell 
and then all your concentration is gone you are thinking of pulav in childhood i ate this pulav now who is making this pulav and you are making a pulav out of that smell of pulav so why that happens because you are though you are trying to concentrate somewhere but your sense organs are not able to withdraw themselves from the external objects that is why it is happening so that is why if you can train your sense organs in such a way that they can withdraw themselves from external disturbances then your mind will not be disturbed your mind will not be disturbed and that is called uparati after that so first is shama then dhamma then uparati then the third quality comes which is very difficult to practice not that the other three are very easy to practice but this quality is again more difficult to practice and it forms the pillar of religious and spiritual life across religions you will find this quality given more importance what is this quality sahanam sarva dukkhanam apratikara purvakam chinta vilap rahitam sa titiksha nigadyate so this quality is called titiksha what is titiksha forbearance english translation is forbearance what is forbearance sahanam sarva dukkhanam that all kinds of dukkha or suffering you have to bear you have to bear all kinds of suffering what are the different kinds of suffering generally we say there are three kinds of suffering one is suffering which is caused by divine forces or forces which are supernatural forces like if there is tsunami or there is earthquake that is called this suffering which is caused by adi daivika which are caused by divine or supernatural forces so adi daivika dukkha then there is suffering which is caused particularly in countries like india by other living beings so if you want to come up in life other people will pull you down so that kind of suffering that is called adi bhautika a suffering which is caused by other living beings you are going maybe some tiger comes and wants to have some snack time tea time then the tiger sees you then has some tea also so that kind of suffering adi bhautika then there is a suffering called adhyatmika some people they will simply sit quiet and they will say oh my life is horrible it's a horrible etc so suffering caused by your body and mind you yourself cause your suffering that is called adi atmika adhyatmika dukkha so three types of dukkha are there three types of suffering are there now you have to bear all kinds of suffering all kinds of suffering how have you to bear that apratikara purvaka without telling anything in reply without uh, trying to respond to that suffering without creating any or having any reaction so somebody is uh, coming and uh, somebody suppose there is tsunami what will you do you cannot do anything anyway there you cannot react but somebody is uh, telling you something some bad thing somebody is telling and you also go and give nice blows then it will not end so that person also will start like that so sahanam sarva dukkhanam apratikara purkam there should be no pratikara there should be no response or reaction and that up to this many of us can do or many of us are forced to do suppose you are working in an office and the boss says that you are a fool etc you will just listen because your eyes are all on that payment salary so if i tell anything to this boss then something will happen my salary will come down etc so you will just keep quiet and you will keep on scolding this person in your mind but you will not tell anything outside so that is apratikara purvakam you are not reacting but that is not the whole titiksha chinta vilap rahitam you should not also think about that so many people and also not vilapa you should not have anxiety and also not lamentation what is lamentation somebody told you something and you did not tell that person you did not react to that person but afterwards you say jano ki bole dilo ma ki hai aapko pata hai usne kya bol diya then it is like bbc many people are there they go on bbc also fails or all india radio you nowadays nobody listens to all india radio or fm uh, they go on telling that and then after a few minutes this person somebody will go and ask did you tell like this to that person like that? so this gossip and you keep on telling oh what happened or you are sitting for meditation and then you say oh you have told me like this i will see you and like that 
all this that people say in bengali mala tanchi first i did not understand why they say mala tanchi are mala tanchi means what japa mala you are doing japa why do you say mala tanchi means i am pulling the mala now then i understood so they will fight in the morning in the day time and then in the evening they will go and sit ha ah, okay irukum bolu thira so that the pull so that is what mala tanchi correct then i understood oh ho oh, oh. this is how mala tanchi so that is what you have chinta and vilapa you constantly think about that oh this has happened this has happened and if these things are not there then it is called titiksha nigadyate it is called titiksha forbearance so forbearance doesn't does not mean that you just don't react it means you should not think about it you should not lament or you should not worry about it and you should not keep on telling about it or thinking about it after that incident has happened so this is very difficult most of the suffering we have at the adhyatmika level is imagined suffering most of the psychological problems people have are all imagined problems there is no problem they simply imagine two people will be standing and talking they say oh they are talking about me this is a huge problem so anxiety disorder or sub- depression etc so that has if it has to go then you have to have this quality of forbearance you have to have this quality of chinta vilapa rahitam in even in modern day workplace environment what does a company want or what does the hr of a company want human resource department of the company want they want people who can work in under tremendous pressure who can be cool and calm under tremendous pressure that is what is being told in vivek chudamani but if you say vivek chudamani says that this oh, is all old superstitious idea but if some hr says so this is what blah 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 something will tell coin some jargon so that is what is necessary in human life to be peaceful you need this and that is why holy mother sarada devi gave that wonderful message that do not find fault with others because the whole world is own nobody is your stranger then shankaracharya says shastrasya guru vakyasya सत्य बुद्धि अवधारण सा श्रद्धा कथिता सद्भि यया वस्तु उपलब्ध्यते यया वस्तु उपलभ्यते श्रद्धा स्वामी जी से श्रद्धा इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट श्रद्धा सो वॉट इज श्रद्धा एंड ही ऑल्सो सेज दट दिस के नॉट बी ट्रांसलेटेड इन टू इंग्लिश वॉट इज श्रद्धा श्रद्धा इज शास्त्र से गुरुवाक्य से सत्य बुद्धि अवधारणम सत्य बुद्धि अवधारणम टू अंडरस्टैंड द ट्रू मीनिंग ऑफ शास्त्र एंड गुरुवाक्य ऑफ व्हाट द स्क्रिप्चर्स से एंड आल्सो द टीचिंग ऑफ वन ओन गुरु सो गुरुवाक्य द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ ए गुरु and also shastra what is shastra how does this word come shastra shastra comes from the word shas which means to discipline to teach to discipline to correct so why is shastra shastra is there to correct us to discipline us so that we get our ultimate goal in life that is realizing our true self so shastra se guru vakya se satya buddhi avadharanam avadharanam understanding understanding or accepting what that which is the correct meaning true import or the true teaching of shastra and guru vakya satya satya buddhi properly understanding and properly accepting now here accepting does not mean simply blindly accepting you accept why because you are aligned to the thought of your guru or the shastra you are carefully following what the shastra is telling or the guru is telling otherwise what will happen sari raat ramayan suni aur baad mein bola ki ram sita ke kon chacha like that it will happen so you will totally miss the point so that is why you have to constantly be on the same line as the guru or the shastra then you will be able to 
Satya Buddhi Avadharanam. Satya Buddhi Avadharanam means you will be able to understand the true import of the Shastra. And Sa Shraddha Kathita. That is told, that is called Shraddha. Kathita. Sad Bihi. And that is called Shraddha by whom? By Sad Bihi. Means by people who are Sat, who are good people. That is sages who have realized that. Yaya vastu upalabhyate. And this Shraddha is, why is it important? By which you get or you attain vastu. You can understand the reality. So Swamiji talks about Shraddha so much. He says the whole problem of society is because of Shraddha. Because you are not aligned to what you have been taught or what you are supposed to do. So, Shastra is what you are supposed to do. Guru Vakya is what you have been taught. But both these things we don't follow properly. So, there is no Shraddha. We say also, even in most of the Indian languages, colloquially we say, there is no Shraddha. Shraddha is not there. That is why this person is not working properly. A teacher does not come to the school. No Shraddha. A doctor does not care to treat properly. Just to see number of patients and get that magic figure no, in bank balance. That no Shraddha. Uh, an accountant does not properly manage the affairs of a company. But again, different things. Only selfish interest. No Shraddha. So Shraddha is not there. A politician or a person who is supposed to take care of people. No Shraddha. So there is no Shraddha. Means what you are supposed to do and what you have been taught to do. Taught you properly that you do this. Neither of these things are being followed. So, there is no Satya Buddhi Avadharanam. And because of lack of Shraddha, we don't get anything. We seem to be going nowhere. A beautiful example Swamiji gives is from Katha Upanishad. Katha Upanishad where the, we get this wonderful statement, Shraddha Avivesha. So, Nachiketa was overwhelmed by Shraddha. So, how can one be overwhelmed by Shraddha? Overpowered by Shraddha. Avivesha. Overpowered by Shraddha. How can one be overpowered by Shraddha? So, he sees that his father is doing a sacrifice in which you have to give the best things. But he is giving Dukda, Doha, Nirindriya, all the jad, means all that uh, cows which have stopped giving milk. Jagdatrana, they have stopped eating grass. Means old cows. All that Vridhashnava party is donating eh? and he is giving and Nirindriya, they cannot also um, produce more uh, calf. So, nothing those cows can do. Totally good for nothing. Those cows are being uh, given in sacrifice, in uh, donation. And so, in Katha Upanishad, Nachiketa saw and he Shraddha Avivesha. What is Shraddha? He has read in Shastra that in this sacrifice, good things have to be given. He has heard from his Guru that in this sacrifice, good things have to be given. Satya Buddhi Avadaranam. And the way he approaches and says, today if we see like that, ah, ki kurcho? Once we will ask, ah, what are you doing? All stupid things you are doing. But no, Nachiketa did not approach like that. Nachiketa said that, who are you giving me to? Because I am Bahuna Memi Prathama, Bahuna Memi Madhyama. I am first in many things and second in many things. So I am also not an inferior thing or a person. So who are you giving me to? You are supposed to give the best things in the sacrifice. Who are you giving me to? So this Shraddha, Shraddha Vivesha. Many people come to our ashramas and give donation. What do they give? Used furniture. So there will be one chair will be there, four legs will be there, one leg will be like this. So that they will give. And then they will give all used clothes. Used clothes they are very happy to give. Why don't you purchase new clothes and give? No, they will not. And then all kinds of used things, useless things they will give. Actually, they are clearing their house. And when they see that old things are there, they come and give. Maharaj, Maharaj, you keep this and you will like that. So that is the same thing because of lack of Shraddha. There is no Shraddha. So, because of no Shraddha, what do you uh, read in the scriptures? What has been taught to you? That 
to uh, god and uh, to teachers and to guru jana you have to give agra bhaga you have to give the first before you even use it not after using what is left okay so shraddha that shraddha is lacking in everything we do shraddha is lacking so we know for example we know that to do a work you will have to check this you will have to check that etc etc uh, then said no no it, i know it has to be done like that but i will not do because where is the time no no and nobody will understand nobody will see it is okay so while cooking also you know that these masalas have to be put this has to be put but then say ah, i can't some any i don't have time so i have to somehow manage and I have to finish hmm oh theek ache okay oh bujhben that is how we work we ah, nobody will understand and eh? this is okay so somehow i manage and give but guru vakyeshu you have studied you have been taught no you have to do like this but you don't do quality control check is not there so we know that you have to check like this you have to check like this but we don't do that is why so many things happen train accident happens aircraft crashes happen because what what you were supposed to do you did not do so shraddha so swami ji says this is a very important quality and we should have this quality and this quality we should have not only for spiritual life or religious life we need to have that even for material life even for life in society we need to have shraddha otherwise we cannot attain anything then shankaracharya says sarvada sthapanam buddhehe shuddhe brahmani sarvada tat samadhana samadhanam ityuktam natu chittasya lalanam sarvada sthapanam buddhehe sthapanam means establishing or stilling or concentrating buddhehe of the intellect of the buddhi shuddhe brahmani sarvada where do you need to concentrate on the shuddha means pure brahman what is brahman we always say brahman 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 what is brahman brahman comes from the root brim br br that means that which is large that which is brahat that which is great so that is brahma that means it is just a epithet it is just a phrase given to denote the ultimate reality ultimate reality because ultimate reality is the only reality and all that we see we see because of ignorance so that is brahman so shuddhe brahmani sarvada buddhe sthapanam so always you sarvada buddhe sthapanam shuddhe brahmani on that brahman on that pure brahman you have to concentrate your buddhi sthapanam concentrate your buddhi always sarvada that is called samadhanam tat samadhanam ityuktam that is called samadhanam samadhanam and then shankaracharya says natu chittasya lalanam so most of us are in this state chittasya lalanam somebody comes to the ashrama and what is this brahma sutra swami ji what is this brahma sutra oh acha this is brahma sutra okay what is upanishad oh this is upanishad what is gita this is gita okay curiosity that is just curiosity oh now i know what is brahma sutra i asked that swami and he told brahma sutra means like this so once in chennai um, there was one swami he conducted a he was the manager at that time he conducted a book fair so our ashrama hosted a book fair so all publishers from the city came and we conducted the book fair usually book fair is conducted by somebody and we put a stall so at that time we conducted a book fair and all people participated our stall also was there exhibition etc was there and there advaita ashrama has brought even now it is there small books two books one on brahma sutra according to shankara and another one brahma sutra according to ramanuja swami vireshwaranand ji most of you are aware of his name he was the president of adhyaksha of advaita ashrama and he was here in mayavati and he wrote these wonderful books short but very crisp and very nice books 
so those books were available and the covers are all same so they were available in that book fair and a volunteer was looking after that so somebody came and asked oh what is the difference between these two books so he said two rupees difference <laughs> said two rupees difference because those days one was five rupees another one was seven rupees so two rupees difference so that is what it is so you know ah, i know what is the difference two rupees difference so that is what happened chittan se lalanam just your curiosity ah amazing so if you go to bengal the other day the, we were discussing if you go to bengal everybody knows about shri ram krishna sarada devi holy mother uh, swami ji and uh, ram uh, what you call ram krishna mission ah, amazing you ask anyone swami ah, swami ji amazing he doesn't know anything But Swami Ji, I mean, Jani, because he was in uh, Kolkata and he was born in Kolkata. That's all. So like that, you go to Vrindavan and you tell somebody that I know. Uh, do you know Krishna? Ah, we know Krishna. Krishna is our person. Krishna is our person. What are you talking about? Krishna is our. We are from the Vraja Bhumi, so we are, he knows nothing. Maybe doing only uh, commercial business. But ah, we know. We know. We know. We know. Krishna, we know. so that is what that is just curiosity is being addressed your curiosity is being fulfilled you know means what you just know information and that too wrong may be information your curiosity is just being fulfilled all these people what do they do that is why in our ashramas when you say uh, admission restricted uh, immediately everybody maraj andar kya hai we want to go inside are their bedroom is there of the sadhus their toilet is there why do you want to go inside so that common sense is not there no we will go inside there is something there inside chitta se lalana curiosity you have to fulfill that curiosity then you oh here also you are also taking food mara then what we will not take food what kind of question is that now that is mara apna ro kha khan hone hamra khai na and this kind of all this why because your focus is not on shuddhe brahmani your focus is not on pure brahman you are not bothered about shri ram krishna what he said kamni kanchan tag that is you are left what, what you are bothered about is you are bothered about only chittasya lalanam just to curiosity for this for, for the sake of fulfilling the curiosity you just ask some questions and you think that oh i know so shankaracharya says from that you will not get anything and that is not called samadhana samadhana means what that is the sixth quality of this group of samadhi shatka sampatti and in that sixth quality samadhana you will have to always concentrate buddhehe sthapanam on shuddhe brahmani on the pure brahman <coughs> om shanti 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 hari om tat sat <coughs>